Hey guys, welcome to the secret history living in your aquarium. And that's a pea puffer. And if you didn't quite catch it, he's going to do it one more time because he missed. But he is striking a very small little ram's horn snail. And, well, maybe he didn't miss. And able to surgically remove those snails out of their shells uh, with that beak. He strikes it and he cracks on the inner round of the circle near the center of the spiral. And then he'll hit it again if it's too big. And uh, if that doesn't open it, uh, he will then kind of work his way with his beak like a can opener and pry it open. But a lot of times they'll actually do this behavior and you'll wonder, you know, they'll, they'll defend the territory um, they'll actually, see there's another snail there that's very young, um, they'll defend the territory, and they'll do this behavior, but they won't actually eat the thing. It's very odd when they do that. He's going to do it here again, I believe. So they usually assess it. They've got that binocular vision. Usually predatory fish have eyes that can face forward for an attack. And uh, there's another one, actually, right behind this guy that just struck back there, if you're watching his shadow. But they strike very, very quickly, and they have these two teeth that are really like scales that actually puncture the shell. And you can actually see that happen, um, well, if this gudgeon would get out of the way. But there's another one doing the same thing, and they leave this shattered debris everywhere when they do it. But it's very fascinating. There he goes. He just struck it. And in that same motion, if they're able to bust the shell that you can see there, see the inside meat? If they're able to break it all in one motion, they will, and they'll actually um, kind of slurp it up as they strike, which is amazing to watch. Now, in this tank, it's an interesting combo. See, this guy's just going around killing whatever he can, honestly. But in this tank, we have an interesting combo I'm trying out, which is pea puffers, uh, peacock gudgeons, and then young bettas. We'll have to move the bettas when they get older. See, here is a large snail that was killed, and the, the uh, peacock gudgeons actually started working on ripping it apart as well. So it got the crack in its shell, which uh, alerted the smell of, I guess, chum in the water, so to speak. And uh, the, the, the peacock gudgeon uh, actually started kind of helping him break it apart and eat uh, bigger chunks of it. So now we've got these gudgeons that are also eating. And we've got the pea puffers that are spotting and killing. And then when everyone's done, the young uh, bettas are coming in. So I think this is actually kind of a good combination. Everybody's just aggressive enough that uh, they kind of claim their own area. Watch, he's going to strike again probably here. See which one he chooses. Probably the moving one. But he's got his beak, he's getting it ready. And even when they're young, this is a young pea puffer, they get uh, these two teeth that are kind of wedge-shaped like a triangle together. And they need to strike uh, hard surfaces like shells to actually not uh, wear their beak, uh, well, so that they do wear their beak down, so that it doesn't uh, actually grow so long as to interfere with their their mouth and uh, in some cases I've heard see there goes the uh, peacock gudgeon now I have never seen peacock gudgeons eating snails quite like this and I think they are learning the behavior from or at least learning the taste from these puffer fish which is really cool I've seen a lot of different fish cribs and things eat the the, the snails before but I really haven't seen this at all. And so 
the fact that they're going for these bigger ones also, they don't have any jaws capable of breaking open um, hard shells like the pea puffers do. They, they've got a jaw, but more so than their jaw power is really their head power. They thrust and then they um, flick their head kind of downward and are able to uh, use it to just crack right in strategically and they know which spot on the shell to strike to give it the most see there you go see it's actually ripping off the pieces it wants out of the organs of that bigger snail there you've got the foot muscle the main meat but then you've also got kind of this uh, organ meat and other parts that the puffer can decide if it wants to eat and uh the gudgeons the peacock gudgeons are really just letting them carve it up which is just fascinating to me so between the peacock gudgeons like i said and then we've got the bettas young bettas um they're they're all working together to clean up these snails and uh i don't know i've never seen i've never seen all this behavior together but it works out very well the, the pea puffers are from India, and uh, they are not from the same range as the peacock gudgeons, which are down from uh, farther Southeast Asia, um, as well as with the bettas. So, quite fascinating uh, that they're doing this. We'll have to do some more experimenting. Um, see, he's he's not. It's it seems like he has decided that in in preference of eating. Well, maybe not eating all these little ones that are around. He has kind of decided to actually uh, eat the 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 larger one uh, and take its pick of organ meats. And the shell really just shatters and flies everywhere. Like you can see when they swim around, it's it's totally disrupting all of that. And right there, you could see it nipped this little teeny betta. This little betta is not even a quarter inch long. So, very interesting combo that we wouldn't see in the wild. Ooh, just got another little one. Um, but that I'm curious how it'll work long term for my aquarium for this 20 long uh, really fascinating behavior if you guys have seen this before uh, please like subscribe comment if you haven't actually if you haven't like subscribe and comment if you've seen it before you don't need to do anything I mean well comment would be nice but uh, I'm guessing most of y'all haven't seen this combo, this trio of fish. But I think if I keep the bettas small enough um, that, you know, no bigger than the peacock gudgeons or so in size, I think this odd, odd trio of destruction is going to actually work pretty darn well. Which, uh, I had a hunch just that their dispositions would work. I didn't actually have any inkling that they're they'd be hunting together at all it's bizarre you see now the gudgeon actually wants these bigger snails now that it knows that they're a possibility of food whereas before these gudgeons have been in here months and they just you know they ignore it they don't they don't need anything to do with this. See, that was an attempt to pull the snail out without actually having to break the shell there. But now the snail will go in, and it will have to strike that inner circle of the shell to get at it. I think you're too late, buddy. All right, guys. Well, they're squaring off over some territory here, but I thought that I'd share you, share with you this video 
Uh, pretty amazing stuff. I was trying to get all three of them together in a shot. We'll see if I can do it. But um, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll check in again soon. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.